بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر ایکسپلورنگ دا تھرڈ لرننگ پیتھ ویژولائز اینڈ اینالائز دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ایکسپلور دا ٹاپک یوز ریفرنس لائنس ایرر بارس اینڈ فور کاسٹنگ وچ از پارٹ آف دا سیکشن آئیڈینٹیفائی پیٹرنس اینڈ ٹرینڈس ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ہیڈ اے لک ایٹ گروپنگ بننگ اینڈ کلسٹرنگ اینڈ آئی مینشن دیٹ دیز آر ٹیکنیکس which help you identify patterns and trends and improve your analysis. Similarly, in this video, reference lines, error bars and forecastings are again some of the different techniques that you can improve to, to enhance your visualization and improve how you can analyze the data. So let's go to the Power BI desktop environment and explore these three topics one by one. So here I am inside the Power BI desktop environment and I have created a simple bar chart which has the sales region on the x-axis and I have the total cost measure on the y-axis. So first we are going to discuss about the reference lines. So reference lines are normally associated with the bar charts, the different types of bar charts that we have seen, some of the line chart categories that we have seen and the scatter plot. So these are mainly the three kind of plots where the reference lines can add more to your analysis and add more value to the visualization. So let me just first explore this on the bar chart. So here I have selected the bar chart and in the formatting options, if you come down, you have the option which says reference line. So let's now click on this reference line here and here it says that you need to add a line so let me just click here on add line and it it uh, it automatically comes up with a name which is line one so i can uh, either you know by using the double click or by using the edit option i can change the change the name of this line but i am not going to do it right now the important thing here is that you can choose different kinds of reference line so let's have a look at what are the different types so we have a const constant line a minimum line a maximum line average line medium line and percentile percentile line so these are the six types of lines that are associated with either a statistical or you can say an aggregated uh, computation inside the visual so let's start by the constant line and then we are going to explore some of the others so I'll select a constant line and here I need to give a value. So let me just give a value of let's say 20,000. So as soon as I give a value of 20,000, you see that on the chart, there is a line that appears which was not there before. And if you come in the settings, this is the color of this line. So I can just change the color of this line to maybe black so that it is more apparent. And then there is a certain transparency which is associated then the style here currently it is dashed I can change it to a solid line if I want or I can even change it to a dotted line if I want and then the position which is like if you want to see it in the front or you want to see it in the back so this is a constant line that you can create and the last option here is the option for the data label so if I turn this label on and you can see that there is a position so let me just change it to the right position so that it is a visible here so here now you can see on the visualization that the label is also visible and you can also change the style of this label so you can have the data value you can have the name or you can have both so if i select both then i am going to get the constant line one which is the line the, the name of the line and the then i also see the value so i can actually do the formatting based on whatever i want here in the visualization area similarly you can again change the style the color the display unit and some of the other stuff which is related to the data label so we have already seen this in some of the previous videos and i'm not going to go into this so this is how you can create reference lines in your visualization so if i go and have a look at some of the lines, different types uh, of lines that we saw. So the minimum line would correspond to the minimum value in the visualization. The maximum line is going to correspond to the maximum line. The average line is going to the is going to correspond to the average point, average value in the visualization. Similarly, median line and the percentile line. So percentile line we can actually 
configure it to the whatever percentile we want to see. So these are all statistical parameters. The important thing is that the rest of the settings are exactly the same. You just need to understand that how these lines are, how these lines actually appear in a visualization. So now let's go and see a, a quick example of a line chart where how we can use um, uh, this these uh, reference lines inside a line chart as well. So here we have a line chart that is based on the start of the month on the x-axis and total cost on the y-axis. So his, the, here you can see that the line chart has been created. And here in the formatting area, I have added a percentile line. So this was one of the lines that we saw, one of the options for this line. So if I come in this area for the formatting here, I can actually go and select the percentile value. So I can put any value here, 99 from 0% to 99%. And the, the here right now it is the 90th percentile to which this value is corresponding. And the rest of the options are exactly the same that the options that we saw for the formatting of the line. And similarly, if I turn on the labels, I can see what is the value to which this 90th percentile value actually corresponds. And here if I come in the types of the lines, here we are going to see that for both the X and Y axis for a line chart, you can have a constant line and the rest of the lines are exactly the same that we saw for the bar chart. So the percentile uh, line here is, is shown for the, for the line chart, but similarly for the bar chart and also for the, for the uh, scatter plot or the scatter chart, we can have these kinds of uh, lines added on the uh, on those charts so the point is that once you know what you want to actually show on the visualization in terms of improving your analysis then you can actually come here and add these reference lines and it adds more context and more uh, focus on your visualization so that was all about the reference lines so now we are going to explore the error bars Similar to reference lines, there is an other different kind of a bar which is called as the error bar that can be added to a visualization. So normally these bars are added to your bar charts, but you can also add those in the line charts as well. So here right now I have created a visualization where I have the sales region and the average quantity. So this is a simple bar chart which has the sales regions on the x-axis and average quantity on the y-axis. So what are error bars? So error bars actually specify a range that a particular bar in your data can take. So you have another bar which is kind of added on top of each of the bars and this bar would, would signify, signify, signify a value. So this could be a maximum value, this could be a minimum value, this could be a upper range, this could be a lower range, it could be anything that you have to specify in your, in your data. So let's go and see the settings for this particular visual. So if you come to the formatting area, you are going to see that the error bars are just below the reference line. So here, if I just click on the error bars, this is going to show me the settings that I need to apply to in, in order to configure my error bar. So the series that has been selected is basically the, the measure which is there in the visualization. So this is average quantity. And then you need to enable this particular area. And here you can either select by field or by percentage. So obviously we are going to select by the, by the field value of average quantity. And this is the upper bound and the lower bound that I was just talking about. So I need to actually pull in two measures inside one of inside both of these. So one measure for the upper bound and one measure for the lower bound. So as we are having a look at the average quantity, it would make sense that I need that I might put the maximum quantity here in the upper bound and the minimum quantity in the lower bound. So we already have these measures as part of the single aggregation measures that we created. So let me just pull in the maximum quantity in the upper bound and the minimum quantity in the lower bound. And as soon as I pull this, you see that there are certain lines or bars that you see for each of the bar. So let's 
just explore what these bars are actually showing. So if you see here, it is showing 6.0 and the minimum value is showing 2.0. So actually what is these, what are these two values? So six is the value for the maximum quantity and two is the main value for the minimum quantity. And similarly for all the others, you are going to see the minimum and maximum values that have been specified for all the sales region in our visual. Then the next thing that we see here uh, is relationship to the measure. So here, if I just expand this, I see the value, which is the absolute value. And there is also a uh, option of relative value. I'll come back to this uh, very shortly, but let me just go through the rest of the options. So here you have the bar which you need to turn on and this is the 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 color of the bar so i can just change the color of the bar so that it becomes more darker i can even change the width of the bar i can even change the shape of the bar also the marker size and some of the settings that are related to how the bar looks like then the error labels the labels that we actually see here so i can again come here and i can assign a different color a different font or whatever value I actually want uh, related to the to the labels I can actually go and configure here and then obviously there is the tool tip so if I just come here in the tool tip also you are going to see the values for the average quantity and then the lower and upper bars so now these are all set for the absolute value so I'm not going to uh, explain the absolute values because we I have already talked about the the values let's talk about the relative value so if I talk about the relative values, the, the, the bar values actually change here. So let's see what is this value 9.2 and what is this value 5.2? How do these values come? So in order to understand how these values come, we need to go and actually note the values for the absolute bar. So the absolute value is for the upper bound is 6 and the lower bound is 2. So how the value of 9.2 comes is that you add the value of the upper bound to the average value. Then you have the relative value which is 9.15 or it is rounded off to 9.2. Similarly for the lower bound the value of 2 is added to 3.1 or 3.2 3.15 or 3.2 and you have the value for the lower for the for the relative lower bound so if i just come back and again show it here then you can see that this is the value which actually comes and this is the this is the same for all the other bars so based upon your requirement whether you want to show the absolute value or the relative values uh, then you can come and you can select the select the values here so these are error bars which are which make more sense in a bar chart but you can also create these for a line chart for all the points which are in a line chart you can actually have this kind of an error bar so the last feature that we are going to discuss in this particular video is the forecasting feature and this is the feature which is going to take us to the artificial intelligence based features of power bi that we are going to explore in a few future videos in the subsequent videos as well so the forecasting is related to time so you always do a forecasting that is looking at the future so obviously the future means that we are looking at something related to time so the forecasting feature is only available for the line chart like the one that i have created so here i have uh, the start of month in the x-axis and the total cost in the y-axis and this is a simple bar ch uh, line chart that has been created so if we come in the formatting options of this particular visual we see that this feature is available just below the reference line and the error bars areas and this is the feature which is the forecast feature so i need to first turn it on in order to show something and here now you can see that some kind of a visualization has already appeared in my area and here if you come and look at the x-axis value so we are having a look at the future time value so we know that the data in our visual in our data set is only for 1997 and 98 but now we are seeing some of the values of 1999 so let's see what are the different settings for the forecasting so the first setting that you are going to see in this area is related to the units which actually tell you about the 
units that you need to pick for the forecast so let's say if i am trying to forecast something in terms of the number of months then i am going to come here and pick months here i can pick anything from seconds minutes to the years so all of the of the time uh, units are actually covered and also you have the option of point so this points is actually based on the number of data points that you want to capture but let's keep it simple and i'm going to select the months here and let's say i want to specify the forecast length is my uh, as six months so i am actually trying to look at six months in the future then there is this option ignore the last so if in the prediction that you are trying to make do you want to ignore any period from your data set then you can specify that okay i do not want this area so i am not not specifying anything here so uh, i'm setting the value as zero then there is a very important thing which is called as seasonality so like the data that we have in our data set so uh, in retail there is always an element of seasonality there are certain uh, months or certain parts of the year where we have holidays or where we have certain other events where the cost and some of the other kpis can actually change so here if we want the element of seasonality we can actually go and we and we specify the element of seasonality so the a logical thing would be that i give a seasonality of the last 12 months so here i can, i know that only one point is related to one month so i can say that okay the seasonality for my data set that you want to use is for the last 12 months and the last point is the confidence interval the confidence interval is that how accurate do you uh, want your confidence interval to be so so the, the the higher value that we specify here the 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 forecast would be accordingly uh, changed so this area that this shaded region would change so let's see the impact of of these so now i am going to come here and click on apply so now you can see that this shaded area this shaded area is my forecast and the bounds that you see here the bounds that you see here are the upper bound and the lower bound so it is saying that the forecast for the month of march 1999 the value is 61387 with a confidence interval that is specified between 59000 and 63000 because i have specified a confidence interval of 95 percent that i want to be 95 percent sure so it has given a wider band but let me just change this to 75 percent so i have reduced my confidence interval and you are going to see that the, this band has also changed so now it shows that okay the confidence interval that you are looking at for this particular area now the band value has actually shrunk and i can see that okay now the lower bound is 60 percent and the upper bound is 60 percent but the confidence interval is 75 percent so this is how you can do the forecasting and this forecasting is actually taking place due to the machine learning and ai capabilities that are available inside of power bi similarly if i come down i can see here how i can how how do i want to uh, set the formatting for my forecast line also the confidence band whether i want to keep it filled or whether i do not or just want a line or something like this and and similarly also the tooltip how i want to configure this tooltip so this is a very important feature if you want to have some kind of a forecasting capability within your uh, data set and for your line chart visuals always remember that this is only available for the line chart so we looked at three very important analytical capabilities available to us the error bars the reference lines and the forecasting in this video in the future videos we are also going to explore some of the other capabilities but that's all for this particular video and i'll catch up with you in the next one